Welcome back, I'm Curtis Stage. This is part two of our tutorial uh, workshop on strobe lighting and doing product photography. So if you joined us in the first one, and hopefully you did, we kind of talked a little bit about the materials that we would need to do this product shot. And in this uh, workshop, we're gonna now get a little bit more detailed and we're gonna talk about the camera settings and the light settings for the strobes and the basic setup that's going on behind me. So, welcome and let's get started. So right away you'll notice that we have three lights in this setup. Uh, we could use more if we needed to, but I think we can get away with three, uh, shooting this one glass here. If we had more products, we'd probably have to have a few more lights. So we have three lights, it's set up in a triangle shape, making a three classic three-point lighting uh, setup. And we also have the two um, we have the two bounce boards, the two white foam cores that are going to bounce lights. So they're going to actually act as lights as well, uh, right down there next to the bottle. I have them kind of positioned pretty close to the bottle so that they're going to, the bottle's going to pick up their reflection when the strobes go off. The softbox that's in the back, it's straight up flat so that it becomes a kind of a white wall in the back. And you'll notice, I'll zoom in on it a little bit, you're going to notice that there's some creases on that softbox. Don't worry about that. None of those creases are going to show up in the photo. The flash will be so bright that the creases will kind of just drown out. Um, right on the either side of that softbox in the back, there's two, there's two black foam core pieces, and those foam cores are not to bounce light. Those are our flags, and those are going to help define the edge of the bottle. The edge of the bottle, uh, you know, if we don't define the edge, it's going to be very difficult to see the edge of this bottle in the photograph. So a little trick is to have black on either side. And you can kind of see it. I'm zooming in a little bit on the bottle right here. You can kind of see it's already doing that. It's already putting the reflection of those black pieces of, of foam core in already. I don't even have the lights on yet, and we haven't even flashed anything yet. You can already see kind of the reflection on the side of the bottle. So it's gonna give the bottle the shoulders there so that we have a little bit of separation between the edge of the bottle and the background. So that's our setup and, and we talked about the surface that the bottle sits on. You'll, you'll see that I have it placed kind of towards the rear of the table and that's just um, because of the lens, the way my, uh, what the lens that I have on the camera, which I'm gonna talk about next, that's just the distance of the lens and the camera away from the bottle that determined where the bottle is on the table. So the key is, um, and you'll, and oh, and also the colored paper doesn't go all the way. I didn't, it's not big enough. It doesn't go all the way to the back. So I put white foam core towards the back end there and you won't even see that. It'll blend right into the background, hopefully. It'll blend right into the backlight background. So we won't even see a horizontal horizon line on that, on the, uh, behind the bottle, hopefully. So now that we're set up with the lights and their placement, now it's time to talk about the camera and the power pack. So you'll see that I have the camera here and we'll talk about that in more detail in a second, but the power pack I'll start with, uh, it is set up off the floor on a crate. I like to put it up on a crate so in case any liquid gets spilled in the studio, it's a rare event that that occurs, but in case anything gets uh, spilled in the studio, there's no possible way that it's gonna get inside that power pack, that would be a problem. There's a lot of electricity flowing through that thing, so you don't ever wanna get that wet. So I put it up on, on a crate. It also makes it a little easier for me to get to quicker because you're gonna be setting adjustments on the power variation on there. Um, and then it's close to the camera. Uh, I could go wirelessly, like I talked about in the last video, to the camera, but I like to have the power pack plugged in directly most of the time. So I'm gonna show you that uh, right now. I'm gonna plug in or show you the plug that that goes in that's the sync cord. And so I've got a couple cables right here. Let me get these out of here so we can kind of see what's going on. So I have a Canon 7D here, but this would work on most DSLR Nikons, kind of the higher end DSLRs. You're able to control a strobe with it. So the strobe cable is a very simple cable. There's no there's only one prong in the middle, so you don't have to really worry about this cable and jiggling it too much. And it goes right inside the connection on the side of the camera, nice and easy. Sometimes I find that this thing is a little loose, and it might just be my, my sync cord. And I'll, I'll often tape this down so it doesn't leave this housing here. So I'll put some gaff tape on there sometimes. And then the other cable that I like to plug in is my shutter release to control the shutter speed or to, sh to control the shutter on my camera. 
that's all I'm gonna do with this on this shoot. And by doing this, by plugging this into the camera, this is gonna override the shutter that's on the camera, just like the sync cord is gonna override the flash that's on the camera. So when I plug this in, and I wanna be careful because this does have little prongs on the inside here on the camera, so I don't wanna jiggle this side to side. So when I put this in, I wanna make sure that I get it in right. So I really wanna look at the direction of them and make sure that that's, that cable's going in properly and I never jiggle side to side, just like what I talked about in the last episode with the power pack. So I've got the shutter release and this will fire off the camera shutter when I press the button when the camera's on. Okay, now that we're ready with the sync cable into the camera and the shutter release on the camera, we're almost ready to go, but now we gotta talk about the camera settings. The distance that you put your tripod away from your subject matter is really, it really relies on the lens that you have. And in this case, I have a lens that's a 55 millimeter to 200 millimeter lens. This is a zoom lens. I could shoot things that are really far away with this lens. I don't need that capability. The millimeters that I'm gonna be at are about between 60 and 70 millimeters with the actual lens when I zoom on the, on the subject. So that would be the optimal size between 50 and 85 millimeter lens. So use doing product photography, you're in kind of the sweet spot if you're between 60 millimeters and 85 millimeters. And there's a lot of great lenses out there, including some that, I'll, that are gonna be displayed on the bottom of this video, that I really like. Uh, fixed prime lenses are really nice. This is not a fixed prime lens, not even that special of a lens, just a basic Canon lens but it will do the job and so I want to be in that 60 millimeter range and that's where I'm going to get with this. So the idea is is to frame the bottle over there on the table in the camera viewfinder so that a good majority of the bottles in the shot. I'm not too worried about the sides, those foam core are going to not be in the final picture and I just want to make sure that I get the front of the table where the plastic is reflecting up into the bottle as well. So I got to frame this so that I'm seeing, and you're going to see an image in here of, of what our framing looks like, but I want to see the whole bottle pretty clearly, and or very clearly, and taking up almost the whole screen, and then I want to have a good spot down at the bottom for, for the foreground to kind of show up a little bit with our little liquidy front. So the 55 to 200 millimeter lens is on there, and let's talk about the st settings of the camera. We have an f-stop, which we want to have that as small as possible iris with these strobes going off. We don't want very much light to get in on the, on the sensor. So I'm going to put my f-stop at f22, as high as I can go on this Canon camera. This is a 7D. And then I want to have the shutter speed at 1 250th of a second. And I can play with that a little bit, and that's where I can adjust. So the f-stop I leave. I don't really touch that too much. I kind of keep that as closed down as possible. And what I play around with a little bit is the shutter speed, somewhere between 150 uh, to 200, one, one two fiftieth or to one one fiftieth of a second. Those are the two that I play with, and I'll play with the power variation on the on the um, power controller here for the strobes too. So I can vary the power of the lights and balance it with the shutter speed on the camera. So let's take a test shot and fire one off and see what we've got. The one thing I want to mention before we fire this off is I want to make sure that I'm shooting in RAW. Shooting in camera RAW is going to let me, when I go back to edit this in Lightroom, it's going to give me the full optimal editing capabilities of this image. So I never shoot in, really shoot in JPEG that much unless I'm just doing things that I don't really you know, need to edit that much. But anytime I'm doing anything that's in a studio, product shots, portraits, sports stuff that I'm going to go back and edit later, I want to shoot in RAW. So if I do underexpose something a little bit, the RAW is going to let me go back and edit it and have a lot more possibilities within the editing. So I've got my camera set to camera RAW on here, and that's going to be the way you want to shoot. I'm not just shooting RAW and JPEG. Don't even bother with that. Just shoot purely in RAW and then you're gonna go and edit this in Lightroom and Photoshop, and we'll do that in a different workshop. So let me fire off a shot here. You're gonna see the strobes go off, so I'm gonna use my shutter release here on the, on the uh, shutter boss, and I'm going to fire this off. I usually close my eyes or look away while the release, while these strobes go off, because they're very bright, so you don't wanna look in them directly 
Of course, you're going to see them directly, but I'm not going to. So I'm looking away as the light's going off. So you can see how quickly that uh, fires off the, the strobe light. And if I look at my shot, which I'll put up on the screen that I took for this, you can see that the shot's pretty evenly done. And, and my goal is to try to light the front of that glass and, and make sure that I can see the whole glass clearly. I want to make sure the focus is perfectly clear. So I want to fire off a test shot, check it on the computer. Usually I have it hooked up to the computer. Check it to see if I'm perfectly in focus and then go back and fire off more shots. I don't want to fire off a whole bunch of shots and then find out later that the whole thing was out of focus. It's very important that this stuff is in focus. And when you're at f22, there's a good chance you're going to be in focus. It's very difficult to not be in focus when your f-stop is at f22. So let me fire off another test shot. The, uh, the only thing that I would do here maybe is change my power variation on the actual power pack here. So before I shot at one, two, three, four, five, six, one sixth of the power. Now I'm going to go down to one seventh of the power. So it's going to bring down the power of these lights a little bit so the flash won't be so bright. So this is where I can adjust kind of the exposure a little bit on the objects. Let me fire off another one here. You saw how quickly that little lightning flash goes. And then I can check on my camera to see what that's looking like. It's looking pretty good. Okay, so in reviewing the shots, uh, you want to make sure that you're really looking at the label on the front of the, of the bottle that you're shooting. And you want to make sure that it's evenly lit. And if it's not evenly lit, you can always place more foam core boards in here to reflect more light back up. And then you'd also be able to put in aluminum foil as well to reflect light back up on the label. The toughest labels to shoot are the ones that have a lot of shininess to them. Uh, shooting something like Stoli has, Stoli has some silver in a label and it's very difficult to shoot that without getting that looking all rainbow with these lights. So a lot of times I tell people new to product photography, start off with labels that are matte that it makes it a little easier to kind of manage the labels. Um, but certainly you can easily graduate to the more shiny labels as you get better at manipulating the lights. So again, strobe lighting is all about light placement, how far you put them away from the object, how close you put it away from the object, the bounce of the light back on the object. It's also about the lens that choice that you make. Again, you want to be in that a, a nice range of lens where you're going to get a nice focus on the subject. It's going to take up a big portion of the screen. And you want to make sure that all your materials that you're working with are clean and they don't have any, uh, you know, they don't have any scuff marks on them, the label, the, the back, the bottom. You want to make sure that you handle all the equipment that you're using properly. Chances are if you're using strobe equipment, you've spent some money on it and it's expensive. So that's it for this workshop. We'll see you soon. We'll probably be talking about doing cleaning this image up in Lightroom and making it look really nice. So I'll see you then.